Hello and happy Tuesday to you. It is a live stream Tuesday, of course. And today we're talking book publishing trends and industry updates. So um, let's just dive right in. It's been a while since we've done an update. And I thought that, you know, with the holiday season fast approaching and lots to talk about around prepping for the holidays, I thought that um, now would be a great time to cover a bunch of the things that are happening. So as always, you can answer your answer. You can answer your own questions, <laughs> but you can also ask them and we'll cover those questions at the end of the chat today. Uh, we've got Angela in the house saying hello and she will collect all the questions for me. And of course, as you arrive, please say hello. Let us know where you're coming from. Hey, Efren, great to see you here. And, uh, and so feel free to say hello at any time. If you're watching the replay, <laughs> let us know that too. Of course, replays still qualify for winning prizes. Um, but we do have uh, kind of leading into the topic today, we're going to be talking about supply chain challenges. And we're finding supply chain challenges supply chain challenges. <laughs> it's kind of a funny one. Um, we're finding supply chain challenges with our swag. So our source for the mugs and our source for the journals isn't dried up. We're not able to get them from there anymore. So we're currently sourcing new things, uh, new places and all of that stuff. So uh, we still have, I think, some mugs to give away. The journals are dried up. Um, we do have new t-shirts though. So uh, anyways, we will, and of course, I still have a few of these, but we're saving some for our holiday extravaganza in December to make sure we've got great prizes for all of you then. All right, so let's just dive in. Hey, uh, Mike's here, William's here. Awesome. Live stream universe is here too. Uh, great to have all of you in the house. And okay, so I'm just going to kick it off. So today we're talking publishing industry trends, book publishing, things you need to know as we wrap up 2021 and roll into 2022. One of the things that comes up all the time uh, in my conversations with people is that they often are really focused on getting an ebook out there. And some of this is because of the funnel building aspects. So getting somebody to opt into your email list and the cost of an ebook is obviously very low relative to a print book. And so a lot of people from a marketing perspective think ebooks are the way. Some people, I think, only buy ebooks themselves. So they're surprised to find out that a lot of people are still buying print books. Uh, and in fact, Ebooks are far from the preferred format for books. Uh, last year was the first time since 2013 that annual ebook sales actually grew. Um, so, yeah, so can you believe that? Last year in 2020 was the first time in seven years that ebook sales actually grew, and they grew 22%. Um, and this is all according to NPD Book Scan. And Angela has a link for that, so she'll drop that. Um, but that was a pandemic when bookstores were closed. And I'm sure you guys remember the start of the pandemic when people were bleaching anything that was delivered. They were all terrified to touch anything that somebody else had touched. So, you know, ebooks obviously seemed more desirable than a print book, which could have been contaminated, right? Um, now that's changed in 2021, and ebook sales are now down 8% versus 2020. Uh, they're still up over 2019, um, so it's still bigger than pre pandemic, but the book sales are, are you know, the ebooks are still uh, trending back down to where they were a little bit more. Um, but the thing to note is this isn't even a quarter of the book market. Um, print is still by far the preferred format for book buyers. And I didn't. Uh, books and MPD, MPD book scan doesn't, uh, or at least in the free data that we had access to, they don't break out audiobook versus soft cover versus hardcover versus um, ebooks. I can't break that out precisely for you. But my big message to you, um, no matter what kind of author you are, but especially in the nonfiction space, you want to have a book in a print format as well as in an e format ebook format at a minimum. And I still highly recommend audiobook if it's in the budget. So ebooks, they're important, but they are not the big chunk of the market. You really still need that print book. Um, but print books have their own challenges, which we'll be talking about here very soon in terms of um, the costs are rising, the supply chain is, is, is having all kinds of problems. Um, so we'll talk about that in a sec. 
Um, but there was also on Publishers Weekly and MPD Bookscan, they put out their top 10 selling books of September 2021. I always like to take a peek and see what's hot at the moment and, and just, you know, snoop around, see what trends are. And so um, I'm curious if anybody here knows what the number one selling book, um, and this is in all books, uh, was in September 21. Anybody got, a, anybody got a, a guess for me? Mindful Eats, hello and welcome. Um, and let's see, uh, William, looking at my bookshelf, you're right, yeah. <laughs> Kit, try moving an apartment with thousands of physical books in the tropics, books grow mold. Yeah, for sure. I've moved so many times in the last decade that I, I used to have three big bookshelves full of books. Um, and now it's down to basically our clients' books and probably 10 to 20 different books. So I have a very, very small bookshelf now. Um, but uh, it was sad. But I, I hope that somebody's enjoying all of my books because <laughs> I donated them all or gave them away. So um, I love both ebooks and print, Angela says. And uh, let's see. Self help. So, Linda, and great to see you here, Linda. I just answered a question of yours on the, the booklaunchers.tv channel. Uh, I'm looking for the number one book. So, anybody got a specific book that they know of right now that was number one? Um, and it was political. I, yes, it was a political book, in case anybody is on top of this. If not, I'll just give you the answer. Um, <laughs> so, it, I'm not seeing any guesses yet. I'm going to go to number two while we wait. Change Sings is actually a children's book um, by a a presidential uh, what was what was she called a presidential cartoonist or something? It was very interesting that there was actually like a presidential title attached to her name, but Amanda Gorman. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, she her book came out in September. Uh, American Marxism was number three from Mark. I think Levine is how you say his last name, but it could be Levin. I'm not sure. I know he is a commentator on Fox and has written some very popular books. Um, that book, I was checking out these books on Amazon and it's incredibly well reviewed. He has, I don't even remember how many, um, like 17,000 five star. And he's got a five star review total, which is very rare to see. So that book is um, very well reviewed at the moment. It has its one star reviewers, of course, but when you have that many reviewers giving you five stars, uh, it ends up netting out. It ends with Us, which is a fiction book, Apple ne Apple's Never Fall, which I believe is a fiction book as well. The Wish, it sounds like a fiction book to me, but I don't know. Little Brew Trucks Halloween, which funny enough is the only book on the top 10 here that I own. <laughs> Little Blue Trucks Halloween. Um, beep, 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 a little blue truck. <laughs> yep, indeed. Uh, and then Bu Beautiful World, Where Are You was another one. Um, and uh, Billy Summers uh, by Stephen King was number nine. And Dog Men, Mothering Heights by Dave uh, Pilkley, Pilkey. I don't know how, but uh, that's another children's book, I believe. It's, it's scholastic books. So the number one book, do we have any takers? Let's see. Um, first pronunciation is correct. Thanks, Efren. I wasn't sure. Um, and, and Efren said he met him, was a humble man. That's very cool. I always love to hear that. Uh, let's see. Okay. N nobody, nobody's got it. <laughs> what? Mike thinks, Mike thinks the little blue trucks Halloween is Jackson's book. What? <laughs> yes. Um, in fact, it is. But I, it's actually one of my favorites because it's one of those books where you can pull open the flap and it's, you know, see who's dressed up in the costume. <laughs> Yeah, it's good times. I like the little blue truck series. Hey, Benny. Um, okay, so the number one book is Peril by Bob Woodward. Um, Simon and Schuster published that in September. Uh, and Woodward has previously written a political book, I think it was called Rage, uh, which did incredibly well. This book is not doing as well, but it's still number one. So it's doing okay. Uh, so that was September. Um, we now let's get to the thing that's, you know, more relevant to you guys. Paper shortages and supply chain issues. So if, first of all, right now, if you have a launch coming up in November and December, um, you need to be aware that even things like your print proof is going to take more time. But if you have any sort of event coming up, you need to have ordered your books already. Um, and if your event is in December, you need to order your books today. Uh, it is really, really important that you are ahead of the game on book 
ordering. Um, Ingram always has a holiday slowdown. They always extend their window of time that it will take to ship you author copies, uh, but it's even worse right now. And Ingram is also faced with labor shortages and increased labor costs. Um, so I, 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 I saw something and I I can't remember exactly where I read this, but it sounds like they're paying their people less than a lot of the other places um, that are kind of in the same warehousing kind of jobs, right? Like Walmart and some of those other people. And Walmart apparently has better benefits than Ingram. And so Ingram's really suffering from labor shortages. Um, And then something I think a lot of companies are seeing challenges and we're going to see um, if a lot of the things I'm reading are right about November, uh, we're going to see a lot of a lot of uh, challenges coming up in the kind of labor market as a lot of big companies have mandates that are kicking in next month. And a lot of people are a going to be fired or B, they're going to walk off. Um, and so it, there's lots of predictions and people kind of saying this is going to happen and this is going to happen. Um, but regardless of that speculation, what we already know is there's a lot of labor shortages already. Um, And there's also challenges because people have, you know, and I run into this too, you know, if you have a kid in school and there's a COVID exposure, you know, a lot of schools policies is to close down that classroom for a week. So now you've got people that have kids at home. Um, So if they normally work in a warehouse and they don't have somebody that can take care of their kid, now they're not in that warehouse. Um, Now they're not as part of that logistics uh, chain. So there's lots of challenges. Um, There's also some weather issues and some other things that are forecasted to impact this. And all of that's on top of the fact that the paper supply chain has dramatically almost crashed. Um, And then FedEx has announced price increases, which has put limitations on some of the shipping and delivery. Um, And so ultimately, this has put a ton of strain on Ingram, which is the main, um, for us, Ingram Spark is one of the main print on demand suppliers, but it's also the main catalog that bookstores are ordering through. And it's really, we've already seen their hardcover prices go up. And I think it's reasonable to project that we're going to see higher fees for other things, uh, whether they start taking a bigger percentage or they start charging um, more for rush orders or something else. That way, you know, their costs are going up, their supply is going down. You know, inevitably, that is going to mean that the prices are going to, you know, get pushed up onto the author and the publishers. Um, Will we see retail prices go up? Um, Probably, but... In, in book publishing, prices tend to go down. The price the price pressure tends to push the prices of books down, not up. So we might see slight increases, but it tends to be the publishers and the authors that end up having to absorb these price increases. So it's going to be interesting. Nobody knows for sure, except for to say that the holiday slowdown, um, book ordering times, you know, supply things these are going to be issues. So like I said, if you've got events coming up and you want to have hard copies of your book, order them well, well in advance. Um, And if you have a launch coming up, make sure everything is done substantially early. So if you have a December launch, you really want to make sure everything is final. You're getting author copies sent to you right around now. So everything is going to be in place because if there's something wrong and you're trying to get last minute support uh, in this space through various channels, it could be very, very challenging. Um, you may even, a lot of the traditional publishers, um, now they get their books shipped from China. And so they, you know, if they're not on a boat now, the chances are they're probably going to have supply issues. So there, we're already seeing a lot of launches that were scheduled for the November, December timeframe getting pushed into 2022 in anticipation of these issues and, and just having more time to make sure that the book is not out of stock and can't be bought because that's a sale that is very hard to get back afterwards. So, whew, so much. Um, so next up, I'm going to just take a pause and see what you guys are talking about because I can't can't focus on this and read your comments at the same time. But next up, I've got some cool stuff um, because that was kind of a downer. So now I've got something cool coming from the Canadian independent bookseller space and even the American um, independent bookseller space. They just had a big meeting. I think it's actually still going on today, um, talking about innovative ways to uh, keep generating momentum and movement and get people into stores and all that fun stuff. Uh, But what Canadian independent booksellers have been doing is really, really cool. So I'm excited to share that if you guys aren't aware. Um, Let's see, here we go. Um, 
doesn't look like you guys have had too much to say. You're quiet today. <laughs> we better do a participation prize. Uh, let's see. Um, what can we do for participation? Well, if you don't already know, uh, usually we just, just for saying hello, we usually have prizes. So make sure you say hello. <laughs> um, and Mike says we already have labor issues here after Brexit and it can only get worse. Yeah, it's that. And it is a downer. Um, so it's one of those things where every time there's the downside of something, I always try to look for the opportunity. So, you know, being more prepared, being the one that has books on hand, making sure that everything is right. That's the opportunity here, but also, you know, eBooks, audiobooks. you know, what are some of those things that you can do? Generate momentum, generate sales, generate excitement for buying your ebook, buying your, uh, your audiobook and all that kind of stuff. So Michael just said hello. And, and, uh, and Marna was hiding too. And Shirley, see, this is how we get you guys out of the woodwork, right? Okay. Um, and Efren said loud noises. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, it shouldn't be too loud in here. <laughs> okay. And Michael, hello. Um, okay. So participation. Yes, there's more comments now that we say participation. So first of all, um, I don't know what we have, Angela. So I don't want to give away stuff that we don't have. So do you have, what swag do you have that we can give away today? I have some swag, but it's in a very specific size. So um, what I don't, I, I, it's always hard when I can't give you guys choices, but I have a new t-shirt in size small. So if you're of the small kind, this is, this is the limited edition because the new version, this was just a tester version. The new version is going to move this. I don't know that logo is going to be on the sleeve. And then I have another one, another kind of t-shirt that'll be coming out soon that says, um, write the book that you want to read, I think is what it says. Um, and then it'll have hashtag no boring books on the sleeve. Those are going to be awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got copies. Oh, that's great. Okay, so we've got copies of my book, um, Self Publish and Succeed. And then we also have copies of Dale's book, which I don't think I have that here. Um, no, I don't have a copy of Dale's book. Um, can you drop a link in there for Dale's book? And Shirley says she's small. So that's good. We know Shirley's small. And then this one is a medium. So I tend to wear the mediums. They're a little big, but I tend to like the mediums. So we've got a medium and a small here. Shirley, you might get to take away the small. <laughs> we might do that, um, but the book is there too. So we've got a copy of my book, um, Self Publish and Succeed. And then we've also got uh, Dale's book, which I believe was the Amazon. Can you drop the title in there? I've forgotten it, please, Angela. Um, okay, so we're going to do for our first one, we've got a few choices. So we'll go, today's October 19th. So let's go 19 from uh, counting up from Angela's comment, which says plenty of comments or plenty of comments, plenty of copies of your book and Dale's book. So Angela, if you can go 19 up from that, that will be our first prize winner of the day um, because nothing lifts up talk about supply chain issues like giving away prizes. So you can then pick. Um, so we, like I said, we have a small t-shirt and a medium t-shirt and we've got copies of my book and copies of Dale's book. Unfortunately, we don't have any mugs or journals at the moment um, because of supply chain issues of our own. <laughs> All right, we photo gal, hello and welcome. Okay, so carrying on. So this is something I'm actually really excited to talk about. Uh, not only because I am Canadian, but also I just love when people innovate and do things to create momentum, even when it feels like things are against them. And so last year, when the pandemic hit and local independent bookstores were suffering, they all got together and they created the Canadian, uh, let me find the note, Canadian Independent Booksellers Association. And they got some government support, uh, but they launched the official group in January of 2021. And it's really cool, um, especially it's worth paying attention to as an author uh, in Canada because, excuse me, um, independent stores in Canada make up 25% uh, of the books sold by Canadian authors. So pay attention to your local bookstores, and especially in Canada. In the States, I think the number is 5% uh, or something like that. So it's much smaller, but it's a much bigger pie. So 5% of that big pie is pretty notable versus in Canada, 25% still a pretty big slice of pie, um, <laughs> even though the pie is smaller. So um, 
so this is Publishers Weekly, Angela, if you have that uh, link um, on Canadian booksellers. So there's, it's a really long, in-depth article. So if you are in Canada or you're a Canadian author, it's well worth coming through this and just thinking about it. But no matter what, I really encourage everyone to connect that it has a book out to connect with your local library and your local independent bookstores in particular, uh, because there's lots of opportunity for you to work together. And most of the time, those local places are really looking to feature their local talent and their local authors. So the news here is, um, I'm just checking my notes here, so I make sure I cover it um, a little bit. So this is halfway through the year. Um, this this association has 115 bookstores and 50 associate publishers and 15 kind of associated institutions as part of its membership. And they have had a lot of success already. And what they've really focused on is um, really ensuring that customers knew there was an alternative to Amazon or even an alternative to Indigo, um, which is a chapter's Indigo which is Canada's main dominant bookstore. So Barnes and Noble in the States, Chapters Indigo in Canada. Uh, and what they've done is they've, they've almost done like bookshop.org, if anybody's familiar with that um, in the States, they've kind of done that, um, but they're, they're being very creative. And one of the Victoria, BC, which my family's all on Vancouver Island, not Victoria, but uh, north, of, north of them, uh, and um, so I have a little soft spot for anything Vancouver Island news related, but they've partnered with some, a local, I believe a local um, liquor store, and they're sending subscription boxes that are wine and books. What a great combo, right? Um, and so they've done that and other places have book subscriptions or they're just filling on, they've got an online kind of book portal that you can order books from. And then the local store ships out and delivers. So um, it's really important. I think the big thing I want you to take away from this is it's important to pay attention to the news and trends in your local market um, as well, because a lot of what the local bookstores and the local libraries want to do is going to be relevant to the news and to what's happening in that area. If there's any trends um, or if there's anything really, you know, top of mind. Now, in Canada, um, it was very, very sad and still is sad. It's going to be sad forever. But um, Current events really drove a lot of book sales. Um, and if anybody's familiar with what happened, what's been happening is they found 1,000, more than 1,000 unmarked graves believed to have the remains of Indigenous children that were forcibly removed from their families. And this whole thing has driven a ton of book sales and people seeking out you know, stories of the Indigenous people and stories of the history and just trying to understand, like, how could this possibly have happened and been hidden? Because, you know, that doesn't happen without a lot of people knowing about it. And yet a lot of these grave sites were just found. And just as one mass one was found, kind of all these other ones were found, right? In other words, people revealed that they were there and they because it had been known for a while. Um, but the point of that is to say that suddenly there was like massive interest in in all of the things around that topic. And two bookstores in Vancouver in particular are Indigenous owned and they were, you know, they really were able to lean into this and support their local community, but also provide resources and information. So that's kind of cool in, in that regard when you look at it from, you know, books provide information and support and answers. And often when people don't know where to turn, they turn to books. Uh, I know myself, as soon as I think, oh, I really wonder about like, can I do this? Or how do you do this? Or I want to learn more about this. I always get a book and, and I know I'm not alone. So just paying attention to what is going on in your local market. Now that was a Canadian example, because it was big. Um, but what's going on locally, because there's always local topics too. Uh, and so think about what you can lean into. And, you know, if you have a book that is relevant to that topic in any way, you better believe your local bookstore and your local library and even your local media is going to be interested in that. So whew, that was a good one. Um, now I have some cool tools to totally change gears. Um, some really cool tools from um, Dave Chesson at Kindlepreneur that I want to touch on and share. And then I think I'm just looking at my notes here. I think that was basically all I was going to talk about. And then we can just do questions after that. Um, let's see. Uh, Linda Kaylee was the 19th comment. 
Awesome. So Linda, congratulations. And uh, you can choose between the Dale's book and Angela posted the title, I believe, is the Amazon self-publisher. Thank you. Um, I wrote the foreword for that book, which was cool. Uh, so she has copies of that book. She has a copy of my book, Self-Publish and Succeed. And then we have a, a small of the black t-shirt or a medium of our red t-shirt. So those are the two sizes that remain of the limited edition, <laughs> the, the test versions of those t-shirts. So Linda, email Angela at Angela at booklaunchers.com and let her know what prize you'd like and where she should send it. All right, cool. So, um, oh, I think we just gave, we gave the small to Shirley. Sorry. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. That's okay. Um, so the small shirt has been spoken for. Um, okay, Matthew. Hey, great to, great to be here. I almost published a comic style pot growing guide. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so where are we? Okay. So Kindlepreneur, Dave Chesson, um, he has probably, he's created the tool that I recommend the most, which is Publisher Rocket. We use it pretty much every day for category research, keyword research, pricing research, and all the things. Um, so uh, Angela has our affiliate link. If you haven't already got this tool and you're running Amazon ads or you're doing keyword research uh, more than a couple times a year, you absolutely need this. Um, Booklaunchers.com forward slash rocket is our link. Um, but he's also come out recently with a new software called Atticus. And I'm excited because I'm going to be going to the um, 20 books to 50K event, which is happening here in Vegas in a couple of weeks. And he's going to be doing a test, like he's going to basically do a walkthrough of this software then. So I'm going to check it out um, because there's a few things about it that I'm really excited about. It's, um, it's essentially a layout tool, but it's something that you can start using early on. So it, it fills the gap that, um, because we don't really like Google Docs. Um, we've talked about that a few times. If you were on our deep dive um, last month, we talked about how Google Docs puts in all this nasty code. And so we have to strip it basically clean of all formatting in order to then format it um, to lay it out for the interior. So you lose all your bolding, any headings, all that stuff. Um, so we don't love Google Docs, but this one provides the benefits that Google Docs has, which is, you know, stopping to have 5,000 versions, because we do have that with Microsoft Word. Every time your book goes to an edit, you know, again, we have to rename it and you have to be very careful about draft confusion and all those kind of issues that pop up. Um, so this has that kind of cloud-based editing, so you can have one version on underway. Um, it has uh, editing features. I think it's even got integration with Pro Writing Aid which is kind of like Grammarly. And I'm um, just looking at my notes here. It's for PC because Vellum, which is the other major layout tool, is only on Apple. And um, let's see, it says, Atticus is clearly trying to beat Vellum in the market and it's like, likely to beat out other solutions that PC users have landed on. Um, and when it, and then this is, a, and I'm not sure where I actually got this quote from, but it says, when we asked Chesson why he decided to start this venture, he said uh, there was too many authors who use PC and could not use Vellum to format their books. So, um, yeah, so that's basically all I'll say about it. I haven't tested it myself. Like I said, I'm going to see it when he comes to Vegas in a couple of weeks and I'm going to check it out. Um, I don't know if we would necessarily employ this at Book Launchers, but maybe if it's got a lot of tools that we like and it, it speeds up the whole process for our authors and, and our team members, um, there might be value in that. But regardless, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it could be of value to anybody that's doing this process on their own and laying out their own book. But he's also got two free tools that he's come out with in the last month, a free ISBN generator, which a lot of people need. Um, and I've linked to one on the internet that was from a source that I've used and so I trusted it, but it wasn't a source I knew. Um, so now he's created one, which is for all authors. And he has a free QR code generator, which I used to pay uh, for a service that generated QR codes. So now if you just go to his website, uh, kindlepreneur.com, you'll find these free tools, which is really, really great. Um, and uh, sorry, <laughs> my voice was fading on me there. 
Um, oh, and I did want to mention one other thing. So I did a, a video on LinkedIn a little while ago, and uh, it got an upgrade in terms of now there's creator mode. And so you can turn on creator mode and it allows you to really like it's another social media platform so you can create content for it. But it also allows people to follow you instead of connecting so that um, you're not connecting with random people, uh, which I think my, I don't think mine's actually turned on to creator mode because um, right now I only I think I don't know if people follow me. I think they can only connect with me. So it's something I should do. Uh, but I was just reading up on it recently as we were looking at other social media things to do. And uh, and it allows you to diversify with LinkedIn stories, <laughs> another place where there's stories uh, or you can have your own LinkedIn newsletter, which I know one of our clients, I think it was Carol Sanford. Um, not sure if she's here today, but I think she was doing a newsletter. Uh, and then you can also go LinkedIn live. So they've got their own live stream feature as well. Um, so those were all kind of cool. So if you are a LinkedIn user and you haven't turned on creator mode, it might be worthwhile heading on over there and turning in, turning on your own creator mode. Um, because for a lot of nonfiction books, LinkedIn is a great platform for finding your readers, finding influencers to connect with, and ultimately just building your community. So, okay. Um, Mike says he's planning on using his new QR code software, which is great. Hey, Todd, great to see you. Speaking of Todd, this weekend... Um, so Todd Nyholm is in the house, everyone. And this weekend on Saturday, we're doing a deep dive training at 10 a.m. Um, Angela, the actually, I'll probably just drop the link in here. So um, um, let's do this right now. Deep dive. Okay. So I just put the link in the chat. Um, so Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're doing a deep dive. And by your guys' request, I've asked five of our authors to join in. They're going to share their biggest surprises, the lessons they've learned, and you know, just be there to answer any of your questions um, from people who are in the midst of doing their books. And I don't know, Todd, I have, I'm kind of all mixed up because I'm at home and at the office back and forth. I was just going to show everybody Todd's latest book release, but I think it's at home. <laughs> um, oh, I have your old one though. This is Todd's first book. Um, Ah, food, why do you trouble me so much? And his newest one, which is, I think pretty much, is it Ah, brain, why do you trouble me so much? It's, it's, a, it's a series. And so Todd's going to be there. Todd's going to be one of our authors. And we have four other authors that will be there. So please join in. Um, it was our most popular session that we did, I believe in June, we had some authors come on. And uh, everybody said, you know, do more sessions with the authors so that you guys can learn from other people, you know, either in the process of launching or have launched a book. In Todd's case, he just launched book two. Uh, so that's fantastic. There's going to be some really, really great insights and lessons to share there. So I'm excited. Um, okay, I'm just checking over here to see. Okay, I am going to now go and do our YouTube comments. Um, but if you win today, we are limited because we don't know when we're going to get um, some new swag. <laughs> so I, I'm going to keep it to winning uh, my book or Dale's book today. Um, so sorry to everyone that was hoping for swag that's, that's been commenting on the YouTube videos. You could just hang out and go on a list. Angela could keep a list for when we do get new swag. Um, but like I said, our sources have stopped offering them. So we are out. <laughs> okay, so everybody who comments every Tuesday, uh, every there's new videos every Tuesday and Friday. And when you comment the day a video is released, you get entered to win. And here is our random name picker today. Uh, and okay, sorry, I got an error. Oh, somebody had something funny in there. Okay, the first winner is the purple UFO. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you for your likes, shares, and comments, of course. So email Angela at booklaunchers.com and check in on what prizes are available and let her know um, where to send them. And then our second prize goes to Robert Newkirk. I think these are both new winners today. So congratulations, Robert. Thank you so much for your comments. And uh, we'll be doing this again in two weeks. And hopefully we have some more positive news on the swag. Um, there is some super secret swag, but I think we're saving that for the holiday extravaganza and for some of our clients that get caught being awesome. We've been sending that, I think. So um, uh, we photo, <laughs> I won the book already. Yay. Uh, okay. 
yeehaw, purple UFO. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay, so uh, Deborah, I thought that you, I thought you got the book and it fell apart. And then I think Angela was already sending you a new one. So um, anyways, uh, we'll make sure that you get taken care of on that regard. So what are the questions that you guys have for me today? Because that was the content that I have. So um, I'm just hanging out here, reading your comments. Uh, Mike says it's 10.33 p.m. Yay, <laughs> it's late. Thanks for being here. Um, I love your work, book launchers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Um, we take a lot of pride in our work as well. Uh, I'm just kicking myself that I don't have I don't have Todd's newest book here because I love it. Um, I do have this one. This one just came out this week. Uh, Harness your inner CEO. This is by uh, Becca Powers. So it says rise into passion, prosperity, and empowerment. I love this cover. Um, and then this one actually just came out. I think this it's Tuesday. Maybe it came out last week. That one might have come out last week too. Um, Fire your narrator. This is a great one. Um, it says, A Storyteller's Guide to Getting Out of Your Head and Into Your Life by Valerie Gordon. Today, I don't have the book yet. It's coming. It'll be here tomorrow, is Emil Pandolfi's uh, book launch. And his is, um, play it. Oh, we went through so many title inter iterations now. I'll get Angela to drop the right title in there so I don't mess it up. And then we also have Brian Krieger's book came out a little while ago. Brian's off in here, so I'll show his cover as well, The Courageous Ask. A proactive approach to prevent the fall of Christian nonprofit leaders. So those are some of the recent launches here that have hit my um, that have hit my shelf here in the office. Uh, okay, let's check in over here, Angela. The questions. Um, hey, uh, Caitlin, or I'm assuming you go by Caitlin. Um, could be Catlin, but I think it's Caitlin. Okay, Angela, I'm just waiting for questions. <laughs> oh wait, I've got one. Okay. So this one is from Mindful Eats. Can anyone please remind me of what's the best way to edit your text on Amazon? My son uploaded a coloring book and his text is in block. So um, inside of your mm, KDP, uh, if you went, if you uploaded it through KDP print, uh, inside of there, you're going to have to get some HTML coding, which is another thing, by the way, that Publisher Rocket does. They have an automatic HTML coder to make your book descriptions look so pretty so you don't have to know code. Um, so you can go in there, enter it all in, format it, and then it'll give you the code to put in there. So um, that is how you can make your description look good. Um, Amazon Author Central also has some formatting that you can use on, um, I'm not sure if it's just your editorial reviews though. It might be your description as well. Um, somebody else might know. Um, this is where Jacqueline, our production manager, or Melissa Sobe, our production supervisor, they do that stuff every day. So they're the ones that could give you very precise answers for how to do that. Um, uh, Julie, what time is it for you right now? It is 2.38 p.m. I'm on Pacific Standard Time in Vegas. So um, play it like you mean it. It was that. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say Emil's title, Emil Pandelfi. He, his book launches today. Um, his book is a really cool, uh, book about, you know, learning, learning to not learning to play the piano, but becoming a professional person in the music space. And so if you've already got a base level and you want to be a professional, this is all about technique and mindset to really shine when you get on stage, when you get in front of an audience. Um, and it's 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 a phenomenal book and he's been a blast to work with. So um, we're really excited for that. Okay, um, question two, are those ISBNs compatible with Amazon? I'm guessing they must be. Uh, I'm trying to think of when we talked about ISBNs today. Uh, probably. <laughs> I don't remember when we're talking about, uh, when we were talking about ISBNs. But um, yeah, sorry, I don't remember talking about ISBN today, but the answer is probably. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, play it like you mean it. Okay, are there any other questions? I don't see any other questions. Uh, just looking here to see. Um, oh, I mentioned, oh, it's not an, did I say ISBN generator? Oh, yeah, sorry, the ISBN generator. So, yes. What that generator does, it doesn't generate IS, the number, it generates the code. So it's the ISBN barcode generator. I probably didn't say all of that. Thank you, Angela. Um, and so what it does, the, this barcode, when you go to Bowker, 
um, B-O-W-K-E-R to buy your ISBN, uh, it often tries to upsell you an ISBN barcode generator, which you feel like you need. So you almost pay them for it. But I'm always telling people don't pay them for that generator because there's free tools. Your book designer can do it. When you, If you're only uploading to Amazon, they'll create one for you on your book cover. So, um, But now Dave Cheston has created one so you can have it you can make your own without paying and you don't have to rely on a book cover designer and all those things. So it's the barcode generator. It's not the ISBN generator. Sorry if I misspoke on that. Yeah. Sorry. If I said, <clears throat> if I said ISBN generator, wouldn't that be amazing? You wouldn't have to buy it anymore to get the legit, but no, it's the barcode generator. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, I hope that people watching the replay, they watch all the way through to this point. So they get that clarification. <laughs> what is my favorite song? I don't, I don't really have a favorite song, but right now we've been listening to, um, it's called Astronaut. And I, it's by a bunch of artists, like rap artists. It's a remix. And my son loves it. And I have taught him instead of the bad words, I've taught him one of the main bad words is uh, the word that sounds like ship. And because it's down in the deep and so, and all that kind of stuff, uh, an astronaut in the ocean, I've told him that that word is actually ship. So when we sing the song, we're talking about the ship <laughs> instead of the word that ends with a T. Um, so that I've been enjoying that song with my son. Um, <laughs> okay, Gabriel says hello and heading off to work. I, well, I think, uh, I think we are uh, all done here for the day. So that's it. So I'll see you guys back here in two weeks, but I really hope to see most of you on that deep dive on Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, register at booklaunchers.com forward slash deep dive. We're going to have uh, Todd and I home and we're going to have uh, four other authors. One has not launched yet, um, but another, uh, another one's been out, for, I think almost six months. And I'm trying to remember who's actually on it. I think Emil, uh, is Emil one of the other ones? I think Emil is going to be on it who just launched today. So you'll get that recent perspective. And I am drawing a blank on tight on a on, on the spot, but um, it's going to be fantastic because all of these authors are really great people. And I know they're going to give you really honest to the point and also uplifting uh, advice to take home with you. So thank you so much for being here today. I will see you all on Saturday and then in two weeks. All right. Take care. Bye.